In today's video, we're going to introduce Meta's new Llama 3, uh, and we're going to talk about specifically how to use Meta's Llama 3 for QA, for quality assurance testing. So first, let me introduce what Llama 3 is. So on April 18th, 2024, Meta was introducing Meta Llama 3, the next generation of our state-of-the-art open source large language model. Meta AI, built with Llama 3 technology, is now one of the world's leading AI assistants that can boost your intelligence and lighten your load, helping you learn, get things done, create content, and connect to make the most out of every moment. So what this means is it has state-of-the-art performance, uh, and we're going to show you a few figures that they uh, showed us, um, and these can be found on their blog on their website. And so basically in this first uh, slide right here, it's just trying to show you the model's performance. So they have two versions of the model, the 8 billion and the 70 billion. And these are different sizes in terms of the number of parameters they have. And for the 8 billion one, which is a little bit lighter, they're comparing it to uh, Gamma and uh, Mistral. And for the uh, 70 billion one, they compare it to Gemini and Claude 3. And we see that for these two different models, uh, in terms of these metrics right here and benchmarks, they perform much better in terms of model performance than the other ones that you see here. And um, uh, I won't go into each of them, but the larger the number, the better. And you see that they, uh, they, uh, they highlighted that Lambda 3 performs better. They also did some other comparisons for human evaluation as well, not only for benchmarking. And so for this one, uh, basically the green indicates when Lambda 3 performs better, the red indicates when it performs worse, and then the uh, gray performs, uh, they perform the same. So when Llama 3 is compared to Claude Sonic, we see that it performs better 52% of the time, and then compared to Mistral, 59% uh, of the time. Compared to GPT 3.5, it can, uh, performs better 63.2% of the time. And then they even compare it to Llama 2, which is the previous version of Llama, and they saw that it performs better 63.7% of the time. So there's also another component of uh, Llama 3. So uh, right here, we just have the, we're talking, we're just looking specifically at the pre-chained models and um, we're comparing it to the other models again. And then we're looking at um, how well they perform on these uh, benchmarks right here. And I'm not gonna go into each of them, but basically again, the higher the better. And we see that Llama 3 performs better than all of these different models right here. And so here is just an overview that they provided to outline their model. And what I mainly got from this, from their blog, is that basically Llama 3 is an open source system. And so what this allows is it allows developers to uh, fine tune the models and work directly within the models rather than uh, many other GPT models that don't allow this kind of freedom for developers to work with. So first, I'll show you later in this video how we can use Llama 3 for our purposes. I'll also show you how you can download and install Llama 3 um, using these commands. You can Llama install it. And then I'll also show you how you can run Llama 3 from Visual Studio Code, which is the, uh, the IDE that I use. Uh, and we'll show you how to use that through the extension Code GPT and how to also download Llama 3 as well. So to access Llama 3, all you have to do is you just have to go to www.meta.ai and then this is what it looks like. I didn't even log in. There's no uh, account necessary. So I'm just going to go ahead and ask a few questions to Llama 3. For example, let me say, uh, tell me about yourself. So you can see that uh, it's very similar to the, uh, to the format uh, as other ones as well. Um, for example, ChatGPT looks very similar to this as well. Um, so just confirm my age and stuff first. Uh, I'll just ask you to tell me about yourself and then we'll see um, what it says. And yeah, so basically it's saying that it's an assistant. It can do all these different tasks. It has some limitations uh, and it knows many languages. Um, now, let me ask it some other questions, for example, let me ask about Llama 3. So I'm just going to type Llama 3 and see what it says. So basically it says it's a, it's a, this Meta AI is a large language model based off of Meta's Llama 3. Next, um, let me ask you a question about what we're interested in. What's, uh, what is software QA? So 
So we see that it's taking a bit longer, but it says software quality assurance is the practice of monitoring all software engineering processes, activities, and methods used in a project to ensure proper and quality of the software. Uh, and this is the response that it gets. And for the most part, it's pretty factual. It's pretty correct. So let me ask another question. Let's see if we can write code. Let's say write test plan for a web application uh, based on a database. Let's see. So this is a test plan that we wanted to write specifically for uh, our case. And this is what we see. Yeah. So that's uh, Llama 3. You can go ahead and play around with it. It's um, it's very easy to use and very intuitive. It's very similar to ChatGPT's model and all the other different models as well. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you can get Llama 3 onto your own computer. So this is the second part of instructions. What you should do is you go to Llama here and then go ahead and download the version you have. So we have Windows. So you can go ahead and click download for Windows. And then once you're done downloading, basically it'll just look like this and you can just follow the instructions and set up. Once you're actually done running Olama, um, you can check if your setup is correct. If you go to your command prompt and you type in control V and it'll tell you what Olama version you have. Now, I'm going not to be using Olama through the command prompt. What I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to go ahead and type in Visual Studio Code. and give it some time to open up. And what since it's open up, I'm actually going to go ahead and click on extensions right here. I'm gonna search up code GPT. And give some time to run. Uh, and I'm gonna look for the second one right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and install it. So I have it already installed. Once you finish installing it, make sure you restart your uh, Visual Studio Code because otherwise you would not see it properly installed. So now once you install CodeGPT, you can go ahead and find it down here and click it. Now, for the purposes of our uh, video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first, I'm going to go ahead and download Olama 3. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, the terminal right here in the uh, Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to go ahead and type Olama pull Llama 3 my cursor 8b. And so this will basically download the language model onto your own computer. And for our case, it's pretty big, it's 4.7 gigs. Uh, the reason I didn't go for the 70 billion version is because I, I just wanted to keep it lightweight, I didn't want it that big. So once you're done, finish installing this, it'll tell you that you finished uh, downloading and pulling the language model. Now you can go ahead and go to the code GPT extension right here. I already selected it, but you can go to the providers here, select a llama, and then go to the model and select the 8 billion version that we have already. And now we are ready to go ahead and use this code GPT within our own model, uh, within our own code. So what are some things we can do? Well, first you can directly ask questions right here, like what we did online, but obviously that's not what we're interested in. Uh, for example, I think the more useful use of this is you can highlight any of your code and then you can right click and you have a bunch of these different uh, commands that you can use to, uh, for, uh, to explain your stuff. So for example, you can say, can you explain code GPT? Can you document code GPT? Uh, unit test, find problems, refactor, and so on. Uh, what I did find was that this Llama Model 3, um, it does run very slow compared to the GPT models that we used previously. And I'm not sure if this is because of fine tuning, but uh, yeah, it does run very slow. So I'm actually going to um, maybe ask it to explain a little shorter bits of code. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these code right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and ask it to explain. Uh, I'm gonna pause the video now uh, because it does take a long time uh, and I'll come back later. Okay, so I let it run for about 
four or five minutes and it's finally give the output. So let's go ahead and see what it says. So this is the code that we highlighted earlier and we asked it to explain it. And basically what it does is it goes line by line and tells us exactly what this code does. For example, right here, it's saying that um, use it to navigate to specified URL. So that's correct. Uh, and then it uses this to get the title uh, of the web page and asserts the title of the web page and so on. So yeah, so we, as we see, this is very helpful in terms of explaining code and it's uh, from the most part right now, it's very accurate. Um, but does it really explain and does it really justify the long run times at the moment? Uh, not so sure, but maybe in the future, uh, we can see and find different ways to make this run faster. But yeah, so this is basically how you can use Meta's Llama 3 in your own coding environment in Visual Studio Code and how you can use it to enhance your own experience for uh, doing QA testing. If you found this video helpful, please give this video, please give this video a like and uh, subscribe to our channel. Thank you for listening and we look forward to seeing you next time.